we have uh, discussed the single stage op amp which is a differential pair loaded by a current mirror and it gives a gain that corresponds to a single transistor. We want to enhance the gain and the uh, easy way is to add another stage. So, we will cascade a single stage op amp with a common source amplifier to get higher gain ok. So, this will lead us to two stage op amp this is the first stage source amplifier with this and there are two possible choices either a PMOS common source amplifier or an NMOS common source amplifier ok. Now, how do you decide which one to connect? Basically, because we are using direct coupling, the operating point here should be compatible with whatever this requires ok. So, that is this uh, the first stage should be able to provide the correct operating point for the second stage. Now, for the PMOS transistor, this voltage has to be PDD minus the threshold voltage minus the overdrive ok. And for the NMOS transistor it is V T n plus the overdrive ok. Now, if we look at uh, the output swing limit of the first stage it is limited to V D D minus the overdrive of M 4 which is I naught by square root of I naught by K N 4 ok. And on the lower side it depends on V I C M ok. So, it will be V I C M minus the N MOS threshold voltage ok. Now, if you look at these uh, values, first of all it is very clear that the PMOS 1 will fit into this window right, because we have V D D minus square root I naught by K N 4 over here and something less than that. So, if you look at where this voltage is, it will be somewhere over there ok. So, I am assuming a supply voltage that is sufficiently large and V I C M that is about half of the supply voltage and so on. Whereas, the NMOS stuff may not because most of the time if you have a large supply voltage and V I C M to be half of the supply voltage ok. Then this NMOS the voltage required for the NMOS will lie in the forbidden range ok outside the swing limits of the single stage op amp. So, that is why uh, the most commonly you see a PMOS common source amplifier after the NMOS differential pair ok. So, here we have an NMOS differential pair loaded by a PMOS current mirror and that is connected to a PMOS common source amplifier. And of course, you could invert the whole thing you could make a PMOS differential pair loaded by an NMOS current mirror and that can be followed by an NMOS common source amplifier ok. So, this is the most common choice. Now, there are occasions when the supply voltage is very small and so on you could possibly follow this with an NMOS amplifier, but most commonly you would use a PMOS ok. It will become even clearer after we see how the whole thing will get biased is this ok. So, basically what we are looking for is uh, we have certain bias required for the second stage the first stage should be able to provide it. So, based on that you make the choice ok. Any questions about this ok. So, let me do 
that. Let me get rid of all of this. And connect a PMOS common source amplifier. This is M5 and M6 is a current source, okay, which is also derived from a current mirror, okay. This is how the picture of op amp normally is M0 M and this is I0, this is I2, okay. So, this basically means that the W by L of M6 will be different from W by L of M0, okay. So, you adjust the sizes so that you get a different current I2 than I0. In general, you want different currents here and there, okay. This is fine. Now, the op amp is still in open loop, we have to carry out some discussions with this, but we will assume that all transistors are in saturation, but keep in mind as I have said so many times that that will happen only after this is enclosed in a feedback loop, okay, but we will assume that everything is in saturation, right. So, now we have the first stage which is this much, the second stage which is that, okay. Now, let us say we biased it at VACM, so that everything happens to be in saturation region, okay. And I apply a differential input V d, okay. Now, first please draw the small signal picture of the entire op amp. Okay, when I by that I mean for the first stage, do not draw the small signal picture at the transistor level, draw it for the entire first stage which we have derived. Okay, so now we will have a macro model for the entire op amp. Okay, so you take the uh, small signal model of the first stage, put together with the small signal model of the second stage, assume that M5 has small signal parameters GM5 and GDS5, and this has GM6 and GDS. Okay, please do this. See, this is quite simple between these points where we apply the differential voltage and here we already have derived the model, right, which is This is GM1 and what is this conductance? GDS1 plus GDS3 and this is VD. Okay, let me show the voltage as well. The current source is GM1 times VD. Okay. Now, this point is now the gate of M5. Okay. So, we have the small signal model of M5 and this is small signal ground. Okay. So, all we have is let me call this VO1, the output of the first stage. If I call this small signal V O 1, then this is G M 5 times V O 1 and we have the output conductance of M 5 which is G D S 5. Okay. Now, we also have this extra transistor M 6. What is the incremental voltage here at the gate of M 6? 0. Okay, because this is a bias current source, this voltage will never change. So, this is 0. So, its controlled current source is open circuited, okay, it is not there. So, we only have its output conductance between this point and ground and that will be in parallel with this, okay. So, we will have G D S 5 plus G D S 6, okay. This is fine. So, this is all that is there to it. I mean, this is exactly what we did when we earlier said that. When we earlier discussed these op amps at the control source level, we had two control sources and cascade, right? That is what we have now. And this is V O. What is V O by V D? What is it? It is just the product of 
j d s 3 times j m 5 by j d s 5 plus j d s 6 is that all minus ok. So, it is negative is not it v o 1 by v d is this much and v o by v o 1 it is a common source amplifier its gain is negative it is minus j m 5 by j d s 5 plus j d s 6 is ok. First of all the magnitude of the gain it looks like a cascade of two common source amplifiers right. So, if you are getting let us say 50 to 100 from a single stage you would get 2500 to 10000 from two stages ok that is the idea here. Now, because this gain comes out negative which is the positive terminal of the op amp which is the negative terminal the input if I have to So, I just have to invert it ok. I mean I defined V d this way because that is what we had previously done, but this is now the positive terminal of the op amp and this is the negative terminal ok. That is because I mean the second stage has a negative gain that is all nothing mysterious here. If we had V d in this polarity the gain from V d to V o 1 is positive and V o 1 to V o is a of course, negative because it is a common source amplifier. So, the overall gain comes out negative. So, we want it the other way around. So, we should define V d to be in that direction. So, from V d to V o 1 it will be negative and V o 1 to V o also it will be negative. So, overall value is positive ok. So, with that modification how do I change the small signal model here? What should I do? The first one I have to point the other way around ok. So, I will define this to be minus V d by 2 plus V d by 2 and this is V o ok. This is fine and V o by V d will be plus that much. So, we will get a cascade of I mean gain which is a cascade of uh, two stages ok. Yeah, what do you mean by parallel? G D S is it is a conductance. So, if you have two resistors in parallel what is the conductance? It is the sum. Yeah. If I had I mean I can also <coughs> denote the output resistance as R D S 5 then I would have written R D S 5 parallel R D S 6 ok. You can do that. G m 1 times R d s 1 parallel R d s 3 times G m 5 times R d s 5 parallel R d s 6 ok. So, we do get uh, the cascade of uh, uh, we do get a multiplication of two stage gains ok. Now, uh, So, is this all? This is enough to realize a two stage op amp. What happens if I put this in feedback? Hmm. So, now uh, this is what we discussed earlier. There will be parasitic capacitances everywhere between every node and ground because of transistors, because of wires, and everything. Okay. Now, just for uh, simplicity sake I will assume that there is only a par there are only parasitic capacitors from this ground this node and this node ok. There could be some load parasitic capacitance whatever load you connect it will have some capacitance and from here also you will have some capacitance. In reality of course, it will be there there everywhere it becomes too messy to analyze. So, I will assume that there are parasitic capacitors there ok like this.
have sorry gm1 gds1 plus gds3 okay gm1 vd and this is gm5 vo1 and this conductance is gds5 plus gds6 okay and let me call this cp1 and cl or something maybe c1 and cl okay that denotes the total load capacitance for instance again you have solved problems already of this type but not starting from the transistor level i could have a unity gain follower okay using the op amp and that could be driving a capacitance okay so the total capacitance at the output is combined into cl and i apply vi there so then what will i do i will connect this up in feedback this way right and apply vi what happens if i do this what happens if i do this and apply a, apply an input step what did we find earlier let's say we have designed the op amp for a large gain right so what happens in this case we discussed all of this right so we'll apply a step yeah everything is in saturation we are talking about incremental uh, things but what is special about capacitors what do they do they introduce poles into the system how many poles two poles okay so now we have a two pole system in negative feedback and you apply an input step what do you expect you don't know what a step is yeah step is not a dc how is a step a dc ha huh. dc is constant all for all time step means it changes from one value to another value at t equal to 0 what do you expect at the output okay if this was an ideal op amp i apply a step here what do you expect at the output same thing exactly the same thing so now this has two poles inside what do you expect we have calculated it so many times ha huh? oscillations meaning it will blow up or it will ring okay didn't we do this what what is the step response of a second order system in feedback when you have a high gain what is the damping factor likely to be very small right it was uh, proportional to square root of 1 by a not okay i mean what is this are we are we in different universes or what's going on what was the damping factor if you had two poles and a gain of a not what was it half square root of 1 by a not times square root p1 by p2 plus p2 by p1 okay we don't know what p1 and p2 are okay but i mean they are not likely to be hugely different from each other and a not is a very large number okay so this is likely to be very very small okay so if you just do this what you expect at the output would be something like that it takes forever to settle okay so what is the solution we found we also did that pole splitting how do we do that which two which two nodes yeah so what we all we needed to do was connect a capacitor here we called it cc we also know we went through all the analysis approximation to poles and zeros phase margin all these things right you know how to calculate cc already so i'm not going to do that okay so this picture with the control sources you know all i'm showing you now is the transistor picture which will give you that uh, picture with the control sources okay so where should i connect it here in the transistor level schematic where should i connect this capacitor cc huh between between the gate and drain of m5 okay cc so that's all let's there do it is this fine so if i do this and choose the value of cc correctly and to do that i will need to know the parasitic capacitor here and there okay once i know that i can find the value of cc such that when you put it in any feedback loop in this case i have taken unity feedback but it could be with some other gain also 
when you use it in any uh, feedback loop you will have adequate phase margin ok. Right you have calculated all that quadratic uh, equation solution for CC to uh, find the value of CC for a given phase margin and so on. So, that is all you have to do here ok. Obviously, if you put down the small signal equivalent of every transistor here you can do it, but it becomes messy. So, that is why you should become uh, sufficiently familiar with treating the single stage op amp as a macro model. It will have an equivalent which is just the control source and the conductances in uh, conductance in parallel and you add second stage to it we can add a third stage also if you want and so on ok. And maybe we will also uh, find out the effect of other poles etcetera this is ok. Any questions? So, this business of uh, uh, finding the value of C C you go back to the appropriate tutorial and find out we have solved many problems of that type ok. So, that is uh, quite simple, but this will I mean this is a usable two stage op amp ok. Any questions on any of this? So, we will come back to this, but uh, let us look at biasing aspects now. Let us say uh, I in fact do this right and I even assume that m 1 and m 2 are exactly matched m 3 and m 4 are exactly matched and I uh, bias the gates of m 1 and m 2 both at some uh, bias value V A C M. ok. What will be this voltage? What will be that voltage? Again we have discussed this enough times right. Yeah this voltage will be VDD minus the gate source voltage required for M 3 for a current of Y naught by 2. This comes about because of perfect matching between this side and that side this we have discussed right. If you imagine that this voltage is any different from this you will get a contradiction when considering the currents in M 3 and M 4 or M 1 and M 2 ok. Is this part ok? What will be the output voltage? What is it likely to be? Huh? So, we are now discussing the operating point what what, what was the question? Certain uh, which region? So, first of all we discussed this part of the circuit also right what is this? This is a PMOS common source amplifier with an NMOS active load ok. This is fine. So, now I apply some uh, input here ok we know that. So, what is this going to be or how would you find out what is that going to be? What will that be? Which region will the transistors be in M 5 and M 6? Saturation why? Top one is PMOS. So, no, no this voltage is something, but how do you know? You need to know what the output voltage is to decide the what whether it is in saturation or not right. How do you decide? Which one? 
we chose the PMOS so that the input voltage could be in the correct region ok and I have told you repeatedly that the op amp will be biased correctly only when it is a negative feedback. Now, it is not a negative feedback. If you just make a stage like this and I apply some voltage here ok call it V G P ok and now I ask you which region the transistors are in how would you find out the answer M 5 and M 6 which region will it be in will they be in how do you go about finding the answer V G P gives I 2 how do you know yeah so what is the so what is the value that V G P gives Yeah, ok you calculate that then this boy how do you do it that is what I want to find V naught in the first place how would I do that or do you know. So, if this output is such that this is in saturation region it will be I 2. So, now how do I find out which transistor is in saturation or both in saturation one of them none of them. We have discussed this even recently right. If I just gave you this stage that is on the right side and asked you to find the output how will you do it. Yeah. We know the supply voltage this is and we know the voltage here let me call this V G n it is whatever comes from here ok. So, we know all the input voltages in the circuit we have to find the output voltage it may be messy, but how would I go about doing it in the first place yes Rama what is the answer equate the currents ok then ok fine. So, now how would just give me an algorithm to find out which one is in uh, saturation which was in uh, triode or both in saturation huh? yeah you use graphical analysis that is right. So, what will you calculate let us say I did not even ask you to calculate the exact output voltage I simply ask you to calculate uh, figure out which one is in saturation which was in, is in triode if so ok how would you do that what will be the current in the output branch if M 6 is in saturation I 2 whatever some uh, value I 2 that I have fixed ok and how much is I 2 it will be something depending on V G n. So, it will be mu n C aux W 6 by L 6 by 2 V G n minus V T n square approximately that will be ok. Now, if it is not in saturation what could be the current huh? it can only be less than this. So, how much will the current be in that case? No, no, that is ok, but you do not know V D S again <laughs> I mean you are answering some unknown in terms of other unknowns that is not this is not small signal. If I have a combination of ok let me simplify the picture Well, M 5 B how will you find out if M 5 is in triode or saturation region huh? so, in this case the current in M 5 has to be I 2 right it is an ideal current source it is in saturation for any value of current as yes, Deepak what is it huh? depends on I 2 ok. So, you expand further <laughs> how does it depend on I 2 uh, ok. So, how will I calculate I mean just give me an algorithm I want to I want a clean algorithm for finding out whether you know the characteristics of M 5 
ok and let us say today I do not want to draw graphs. So, what should I do? Uh, so, you assume m 5 is in saturation then what will you do? Equate the current, you just uh, you find out the current how much is that? I have m 5 it is in if it is in saturation will be how much is it? Something yeah k p 5 by 2 v d d minus v g p minus square ok. Then what? Ok I calculate this then compare this to I 2 ok then what is the conclusion? If this is more than I 2 what happens? M 5 will go off into triode ok. Even if it starts in saturation this voltage will keep building up until it goes into triode and of course, it can support a current that is less than this and the effective current will be I 2 ok. If this is less than I 2 what happens? Yeah. So, of course, if you assume an ideal current source what happens is this voltage will keep on lowering until it goes to minus infinity, but it is not. So, we have m 6 and if m 6 is in saturation there is some current in it ok that is what we called I 2 right. Okay. So, what does this mean then? The, so, obviously, you just calculate if m 5 is in saturation is in saturation how much current it has to carry and if m 6 is in saturation how much current it will carry ok. And if they come out to be unequal if uh, the saturation current of this is more than that what does it mean? M 5 will be will eventually go into triode region and M 6 will be in saturation region and if it is the other way around what happens? M 6 will be in triode region ok. So, this is how we, we find out. So, now so that I mean given that what is this voltage likely to be ok. So, let us say this is the condition the saturation current of m 5 is more than the saturation current of m 6 what is the output voltage going to be? We know that m 5 will be in triode region m 6 will be in saturation region. So, what will be the output voltage? Huh? We already did that. I mean, just tell me where it is likely to be. What? I don't want the numerical value now, right? Huh? Yeah, it'll be cl quite close to VDD, right? See, we have calculated the characteristics of this also from VGP to the output. If this is VDD, the characteristic look like that. Huh? So, if M5 is in triode region, the output voltage will be quite close to. V d d and similarly in the other case if the saturation current of m 5 is smaller than the saturation current of m 6 what will be the output voltage? Close to ground I mean m 5 being in triode means that there is a very small voltage across m 5 this is very close to V d d. Similarly, m 6 being in triode means this voltage is close to ground ok. So, the output voltage will be close to ground. So, now the point I was trying to make was that if you just leave it in open loop like this your bias is at VACM you even assume perfect matching between these ok between M 1 and M 2 and also between M 3 and M 4. This output voltage then we can tell, but we still cannot figure out what this is ok and in fact, it is very likely to be either very close to V d d or very close to ground ok. Now, it could be that somehow you have adjusted the size of M 5 so that this voltage gives you exactly I 2 right that is possible. You can adjust the size of m 5. So, that with this particular gate voltage you will get exactly 
I 2 that is the saturation current of M 5 and M 6 are the same. What happens in that case M 5 and M 6 are the same? Huh? Both could be in saturation region, okay. but even then you cannot tell the voltage because small variations will make a large change in the voltage. So, the point I am trying to make here which we know already we know that op amps have to be in, uh, in closed loop, but that is also reinforced here right. So, if I try to use the op amp in open loop okay, and apply a 0 differential voltage to the input that is what I have done I have simply biased both sides at VICM there is 0 input to the op amp 0 differential input to the op amp. The output is very likely to be either near the supply rail or the lower ground rail okay. And now, you can even make some extra effort to make sure that the saturation currents of these two are equal. Then we can at first look it looks like this uh, these two may be in saturation region, but even that is not true because we already assumed perfect symmetry between these. If that symmetry is not there this voltage is not going to be this one okay, it will be some random amount away from that okay. So, if you make an op amp like this most often you will see this output to be either close to VDD or close to ground it will simply not get biased okay. So, that is what I was trying to say. Now, how will it get biased? What should we do to bias it properly? Huh? We out? No, the see the transistors are not in saturation region right. I did all my analysis assuming everything is in saturation region they are not. So, what should I do? How do we bias an op amp? When will the op amp bi get biased correctly? Huh? I have been saying this all the time right. Negative feedback it has to be enclosed in negative feedback. So, let us see what happens in that case. So, let me connect it up in unity feedback this is my op amp right. So, I will show that connection here this is driven from uh, feedback ok. I do this right and let us say this is some V i 0 ok and I have chosen V i 0 to be within the input common mode range of the op amp ok. So, that the input stage gets bias correct. So, now what happens? What will be the output voltage? Huh? What will be the output voltage? V i 0. Why? Negative feedback, but uh, let us go a little deeper. Okay, We saw this picture, we are familiar with the ideal op amp and we expect that the output is V i 0, but can you tell me from the transistor level circuit what happens? So, let us say this voltage V o is greater than V i 0. What happens then? Why? That is what let us go deeper into the transistor level what happens? If V o is greater than V a 0 exactly what will happen in the circuit? Huh? Currents will be different ok. So, now the current in M 1 and M 2 will be different because the gate voltages are different from each other right. The gate voltage of this is V i 0 the gate voltage of that is V o and V o is more than V i 0. So, which current will be more? current in M 1 will be more ok. So, this will be I naught by 2 plus some delta and this will be I naught by 2 minus some delta with a positive delta. Then what happens? What happens after this? Huh? What will be the current in M 3? It is the same as this. What is the current in M 4? Same as which one? I not by 2 minus delta why? What will it be? According to the current mirror it will be I not by 2 plus delta of course, this is apparent violation of Kirchhoff's law you have to imagine that there is a capacitor there. So, what happens in that case? Voltage will voltage will what happen? Go up if the voltage goes up what happens to the current in M 5? it will it will reduce ok. So, if it reduces what happens to this voltage? 
your M5 is pushing current into that node, but it is falling. The current is falling. So, what happens to the voltage? It will reduce. Okay. This is this is just negative feedback done in some gory detail. That's all. Okay. This is what negative feedback is. So, this current will fall, and when will it stop? When? When will the whole thing stop? This current has to be balanced by that current. Okay. And this current has to be balanced by that current. Otherwise, there will be some current going into the parasitic capacitance here or in the output and the voltages will go on changing. The voltages will become steady only when these currents are balanced. Okay. Is this fine? So, with negative feedback there is no problem. Right. So, this is a current source of value I 2 eventually M 5 will get biased at I 2. Right. But if you leave it in open loop that is not going to happen. Is that okay? and the output will be whatever for the currents in M 3 and M 1 and M 2 to be balanced this and this voltage has to be exactly the same as each other. So, the output also will be equal to V i 0. Okay. Now, in this whole analysis we have neglected the effect of uh, G D S essentially it means that we have assumed in the incremental picture an op amp with infinite gain. Okay. So, the output will be exactly equal to V i 0, but with the presence of this lambda it will be slightly different, but not very different. Okay. Any questions about this? So, I mean you have to be able to uh, explain things to different levels of detail. So, now at the transistor level also we know, I mean we knew that the op amp has to be used in negative feedback. Now, you know why, right? Because if I make an op amp and throw it there and if I leave the inputs even with a zero differential input. Okay, the output is likely to be either near the upper rail or the lower rail. This is what happens. You can try it in the lab. Okay, you take an op amp, you tie both inputs to ground, and both inputs to the same value, and the output will be off to one side or the other. So you have to place it in negative feedback. Okay, is this is fine. And there is now once the when we say op amp is a negative feedback, the op amp has transistors M1, M2, M3, M4, M5. Everything is in negative feedback. Okay. So, everything will get biased properly okay? because even with the single stage op amp we said that the current will split equally, but that will happen properly only when it is in negative feedback. Okay? And to see that it is actually quite easy if you view it slightly differently. Let me just take a transistor M 5 forget that this is part of an op amp and all that stuff. Okay. And I am trying to bias it with a current I 2 using drain feedback that is I sense the current at the current difference at the drain and feed it back to the gate. How should I do this? What should I do? Yeah, the simplest implementation is to connect the drain and gate of M 5. Okay. But in general what I need is some positive incremental gain between there and there. That is what I want is for the gate voltage to go up when the drain voltage goes up and vice versa. Okay. So, this will do it and the simplest implementation was to just connect a wire. Okay. So, now what is this doing? So, if you look at between the drain of M 5 and the gate of M 5 we have the rest of the circuit. What is the rest of the circuit? What is it? It is a single stage op amp. Okay. So, what we have done is the following and also as far as the single stage op amp is concerned, which is the positive terminal and which is the negative terminal? If I think of this as the output, which one is the positive terminal? M 1. Okay. So, what we have done is if what is enclosed in this uh, pink line. Okay. So, let me draw that as an op amp. Then the positive terminal of that is M 1. So, we connect it that way. The negative terminal of that is the gate of M 2 and we connect it to V i 0 and we connected that. Okay. Now, you can see how M 5 is biased. right? So, there is another stage which is providing a positive incremental gain from its drain to gate. 
So, you can think of this of course, this was not the purpose our purpose was not to just bias m 5 we want to make an op amp, but this to show you that everything in a feedback loop will be biased like this ok. So, once you have negative feedback everything will get biased ok, otherwise this type of picture does not make any sense. Uh, so, here I say I 2 here and of course, the currents in these two will be equal, but you won't know what it is ok, depending on the saturation currents of m 5 and m 6 it can be anything and also just to progress with the analysis I have to initially assume that everything is in saturation, but you now know that it is not a total con job because when I do put it in feedback things do work properly ok. And similarly you can think of biasing m 4 or something like that ok. So, m 4 you can think of biasing it from this and then there is feedback. Uh, so, if you want to trace the feedback from for m 4 there will be a negative feedback going that way ok from its drain to gain. So, for every transistor you could do that ok, because we cannot apply a current to the drain of a transistor. You can sense the current difference at the drain or the source and you have to apply feedback to the gate ok, but that is what will happen for every transistor if you look at it right. So, this op amp will also be biased correctly and we will continue from uh, this tomorrow. Now, what we have to do uh, some of the remaining things to do are evaluate the swing limits and so on. Now, you see that the input of this op amp looks exactly like the input of the first stage op amp right. So, the swing limits the on the input side or in the input common mode are exactly the same also on the output we have to evaluate, but that is also very easy is ok. Any questions about any of this ok.